Hey guys and welcome back to the Art of 3D Printing. Um, on today's video we are going to be reviewing the uh, FL Sun printer over here. Um, it's the latest printer from FL Sun, uh, the Chinese kit manufacturer. So let's talk about the printer. Um, you can get it on AliExpress. Um, it comes in at about 450 Australian dollars. Um, they claim the print volume to be 260 millimeters by 260 by 350. But that comes to the first issue I had with the printer is that on the build plate here, it's got four mounting screw holes, which are not on the edge of the build plate. They they're like in the print volume. So those are 240 millimeters apart. So that, in my opinion, that's the maximum you can actually print. Um, it comes with an E3D clone V6 uh, with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Um, it's got a Bowden extruder setup, and the control board is an MKS based version one, running Marlin RC7. Um, it does come with an inductive sensor with the uh, with an acrylic mount um, to mount it next to the hot end. Um, so that does have that enables you to use the auto bed leveling feature in Marlin, and the whole printer is powered by a 12 volts power supply. Um, so the design of it is uh, it's a Cartesian printer. Um, it uses the MakerBot style kinematics. Um, it does have dual Z lead screws um, on either side, so one on either side of the print bed, which is a feature that I liked. Um, so that kind of removes the that, that cantilever design that normal um, cube printers use, where they've only got the one lead screw and it kind of the bed just kind of like sits off at an angle like that. The frame is twenty twenty aluminium extrusion, um, held together with. Um, the 90 degree aluminium corner brackets. Um, all the mounting parts for the hot end and the carriages and stuff are all uh, 3mm acrylic. And the only 3D printed parts I found on the frame were the um, the brackets of the bearings for the uh, linear rods in the XY movement. So the printer comes with an SD card with all the instructions and firmware and stuff all loaded onto that. So there is a, a an assembly manual uh, in a PDF format, which was fairly simple to follow. There's a lot of steps. Um, with this printer kit, it's definitely like, like I've never assembled a printer that has so many screws. Pretty much every attachment is a screw and a nut. Um, so that's one of the things I didn't really like about this printer. It, uh, it's got a whole lot of screws. That's just a personal thing of mine. I mean, it just, it got to the point where I, the night I was building it, I actually just stopped because I was kind of getting frustrated with the amount of screws that uh, I had to put together. With the design using the aluminium corner brackets in the 2020 extrusion, in theory, you should just be able to screw all the brackets together and the frame together and it should be perfectly square, but I had an issue where I had to kind of like force it into square by like bending it and measuring it and all this, so trying to get the frame square um, was a challenge, but I got it close enough in the end. With the with these Z-axis linear rods, they need to be spaced to the right amount to match the acrylic bed mounting plates because that's got pre-cut holes for the linear rods, the Z-axis screw and the linear bearings. Another one of the issues I had was um, in the manual they, they say to use this 80mm uh, acrylic spacer to space out the uh, Z-axis linear rods. Um, the reason they give you that is because the mounting bracket the acrylic mounting bracket for the Z plate, I mean for the for the bed plate platform, has pre-cut holes. So the linear rods had to be an exact distance apart for the rods to match up with the holes in the acrylic bracket. Um, so they give you this 80 millimeter spacer to use as a reference when mounting them. And when I mounted them in that exactly 80 millimeters from the edge of the printer, the linear rods were just too far apart. So I kind of had to just wing it and get them in the right place. Another issue that this caused was um, the Z-axis end stop bracket ended up being too short. Um, when I tried to mount it on the back of the frame here, the bed plate where it's supposed to come down and push the end stop, the arm that the end stop is mounted on wasn't long enough because it was only 80 millimeters. It actually just didn't reach the bed. So um, that basically made the Z end stop useless. And at this point I was like, well, can't really use a printer without a Z end stop 
But then I remember that the I could use the uh, inductive probe as the Z end stop. So once I finally got it to read on my computer, I opened up the firmware file on the SD card into Arduino and just um, so like I do with all firmwares um, that I upload onto 3D Print, I just have a quick run through them. Um, just change the settings. I know like the um, the acceleration and the X Y jerk settings were a little too high, so I just muddled those down a bit and um, I set up the inductive sensor as the Z end. Uh, Z min end stop and also I disabled auto bed living because I didn't want, didn't need that Next step I went through was just the, your standard extrusion calibration um, Just to get to make sure that the E steps for the extruder were right and they turned out to be spot on um, Straight off the SD card then I uh, ran a quick PID tune to get the temperature to be stable um, So this kit comes with two spools of PLA uh, small spools like this. This was actually my favorite part of the kit um, I really like this green PLA, it's got like a nice pearly pearlescent sheen to it. Um, so I loaded some of that in and then I uh, just, before my first test print, I just quickly ran a, a Z offset kind of test print just to do one layer so I can set up the Z probe offset um, on the induction center. And then once I got that dialed in, I did the first print. So this was my first print here. So this is a model of the Burj Khalifa, uh, the world's tallest building. Um, I'll show you some close-ups of these. This, uh, this came out flawlessly. I was actually surprisingly really impressed. I wasn't expecting much from this printer. Um, next I printed this, uh, this vase from, um, I think it's Prusa, Prusa Research designed this. I got this off Thingiverse. Um, this is printed in vase mode on Cura at 0.2 millimeter layer height. Um, and the next print I did, uh, I did three prints here where I'll show you some close-ups. I printed these three Marvins, um, one at 0.3, one at 0.2, and one at 0.1. Um, and like if you look at the 0.1, you can see there's a bit of ringing, um, which you kind of expect from this printer. It, um, it's not the most sturdy design. Um, I feel like there's a lot of resonance in the frame design, and also the, the slight bit of slop in the uh, linear rails in the linear variants, um, but I was really impressed by the, the overall quality. Um, it does, one of the things that it is missing, especially for PLA, is a cooling fan. Um, it has a hot end fan, but um, there's no active cooling. Um, the next print I did was just to test the, uh, the build volume. And I printed this vase, this vase here. Um, now this took, this actually stopped because I, I printed it at, I think it was 0.3 millimeter layer height with two walls. And um, yeah, it used the whole roll of the white um, and actually ran out of filament. So the print volume is probably about there. Um, and the quality of this is um, not perfect, but uh, I didn't spend too much time tuning this printer. Um, you can tune the, um, the extrusion multiplier a bit more and uh, and tune the probably slow the speeds down, adjust the XY jerk and stuff like that to get a bit better quality. So overall, my thoughts on this printer, um, it's nothing special, I wouldn't say. Um, when FLSun contacted me and asked me if I would review a printer for them, they originally said to me, "Oh, they want to send me the um, the i3." I said, "No, that's that's boring. Everyone's uh, seen i3s and stuff." And I so I had looked at their new Q printer. I said, "Oh, that looks pretty interesting." Wouldn't mind testing that out, so they uh, they sent me this one. My overall thoughts of it, um, it's pretty much what I expected. It's actually slightly better. I wasn't expecting too much. Um, the build volume is really impressive um, for the price. Um, a few modifications and stuff here and there, you can actually get really good prints out of it, especially with tuning. I mean, I didn't take too much time to tune it. Um, the wire management could definitely do a better job. I think it's probably good value for money. Um, there are better, there are probably better value for money printers out there, but if you're looking for a large print volume and um, the dual Z axis is a really good feature, um, then I could probably could probably recommend this printer for you. With FL Sun, I know they've got a, a like a, a, a plug and play printer or Delta printer that they that's coming out soon. So hopefully I can get one of them for review. Um, I have a link in the video description for where you can buy this um, on FL Sun's. AliExpress page. And that's it for this review, so uh, we'll see you next time on the Art of 3D Printing.